Leadership Season 2 with People First. This is Esther Tanis with The Journey of an Entrepreneur. We have Shakira Brown who's going to be talking about... Brand recognition through making a difference. Fantastic. We have been talking about branding, employer branding, company branding, finding those people to work for you. Who, what makes a difference? What are they looking for? Today we're going to talk about specifically how do you brand your organization to attract those right people. Let me tell you a little bit about Shakira. Shakira, Shakira is an award-winning PR and branding expert and founder and CEO of SMB Strategic Media LLC. It's a firm that helps small business owners to get the heart of why the customers and clients buy their goods. She is, also has won 13 industry awards in various disciplines of her work and is a national small business speaker, known as the Small Biz Whisperer. She is the host of a Moments Masters show, Small Business Podcast, available in iTunes and Google Play, among others, and she is also contributing a writer for Black Enterprise. So exciting to have you here today, Shakira. Tell me a little bit about you. Thank you. Well, I started uh, my career as a television news producer, believe it or not. Um, so I've touched upon all aspects of media, uh, whether it's TV, radio, print, um, also advertising, marketing, public relations, branding. I really have done it all. And at this point, um, I've kind of honed all those skills into the one business where I can help small business owners. And I really focus on small business because I recognized years ago that small businesses couldn't afford the firms that were offering the similar services. They would go, I would go to events and say, so who does your public relations? And all the business owners would say, I don't have that. I can't afford that. And I was like, why, why couldn't I do that? I have a low overhead business. I had a model that made sense for that. So that's my, my, my true mission is to help small business owners grow and do that with uh, helping them really develop their brand uh, and figure out how to solve their, what I call their existential business crisis, who they are, who they want to be, and how they want to be perceived. That is so awesome. We have been talking about this for the past month, how important it is to have your company recognized and have a great reputation. And she, Shakira today is going to share with us some of those techniques and how to use it part of your organization and how to grow through branding. But there's a specific way how to do it. Right. So some of the things that I'm hearing are people are looking to leverage public relations uh, for self-serving reasons. Now, I mean, that's fine, but no one else has to believe in that. So you need to do something that people can believe in, stand behind, and look at you in such a way that they feel that your company is, rep is a representation of the community and a, and a, and a good uh, corporate citizen, uh, which is something that you hear at large companies, but it's not spoken about at small businesses. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to help small businesses recognize the importance of making a difference to not only get the recognition that they desire, but to earn the reputation that they really want, to earn that recognition. So one of the things that um, I'm helping uh, some businesses do is to come up with corporate social ability repro uh, responsibility programs that are geared for small businesses. So this doesn't mean you have to give $10 million because people think about that. They hear that with big companies, right? They hear it with pharma companies and they're donating. Uh, one year, I got an email from Dick's Sporting Goods and they announced that they had given $20 million to St. Jude's mm -hmm. Hospital. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's like light years away from what a small business can do. But you, there's ways that you can embed yourself into the community and then make helping the community a fabric of the company. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and approaching public relations strategies with that in mind. That's the most important thing that has to get, come across for small business owners. That is very interesting. And I, and I felt the same way that I haven't been able to do those big, you know, donations and our organization have donated time with different organ with different organizations, yeah. but we have never marketed because we didn't think it was um, it wasn't big enough. Right. You know, it just yeah, and you, know, you don't have to think of it this way. If you're focusing on a small organization, that's you know that if you give them two thousand dollars, say you're able to put together a two thousand dollar donation, whether it's from you've solicited your own clients, you've had an event, you sold something. If you look at a small organization in your community, like a soup kitchen, two thousand dollars is like ten thousand dollars to another organization. I mean, to, to them, right? To them, it's two. Like you give them two, they can make that. That's like huge because no one thinks of them. Wow. You have to look at 
the smaller organizations. I have an example of a, of a story that relates just to that. Um, I worked uh, my last corporate job. I was in director of corporate communications, and uh, the company decided that they were going to donate money to St. Jude's. Mm. I already told you that, that that was the year that I got that email that, that Dick's Sporting Goods had donated $20 million to them. But we didn't know that. So we so somebody in the company decided St. Jude's, okay. So they, they sold raffle tickets at their holiday party. We had a couple of hundred people there. We had about 300 people at corporate office. And uh, through that, they put together $2,000. I think maybe the company matched that. So say 4000 went out to St. Jude's. Then I get that email, which I shared with the company uh, leadership, and said, look, Dick Sporting Goods made $20 million uh, a donation to them. So whereas we had a soup kitchen right in the same neighborhood as this company, mm -hmm. If they had given that four thousand mm dollars to them, it would have been a, made a huge difference because no one is really thinking of making the big donations to them. People donate their time a lot to those organizations, mm -hmm. but the big checks are not coming. And for them, a big check is four thousand. A big check is even fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So find organizations that are needy. Don't pick the ones that you see on TV all the time. Right, because uh, they have. They obviously, if they, if they have a television commercial, they they're getting the money. They're oh, getting yeah, the money. Getting and money. if you can only do five hundred dollars. Give it to an organization where five hundred dollars is going to make a difference. Another thing you can do is to leverage whatever network that organization has. Give you know they may not have resources to create a press release. Maybe you can do that. Uh, maybe you can do a small write up. If they have a newsletter, they can put it in their newsletter. So now they're letting whomever is supporting them know about what you've done for them. You have made a donation five hundred, or you've donated time, or whatever. That's so, awesome. yeah, you always have to think in terms of how can we partner with these organizations, um, help make a difference, and also leverage it to earn that brand recognition. You know, and, and as a, I love to market it because, you know, without marketing, you can't get your company name out there. And I found that when I focus, now that we're in Princeton, one of our offices in, is in Princeton, we de decided to start marketing here in town and participate in as many activities as possible and let people know that we're here, we're Absolutely. here to serve, we're here to give, we're here. And that makes so much more sense to give, donate, donate to an organization that's within your, within the town. Yeah. You know, because you are making a big difference. You know, a couple of years ago, we went and donated time and they asked for food. And it was for teenagers, homeless teenagers, which is the fastest growing group of homelessness people. This is because once they leave the... Um, their foster care mm -hmm. after a certain age. They age out. They age out. Yeah. And there's so many 18-year-old kids out there homeless. And I, you know, it's and all they ask is for you to come in with food and share a story and just give these kids companionship. So I'm with you. Tell us a little bit of how, how what are the, what are the, um, what are the, how do you write that PR? Because I think one of the biggest issues I have is, I don't know how to write a PR. And, of mm -hmm. course, I will have to hire you. Yeah. But, yes, but what please do. what are the key do. things that a PR <laughs> should have? What are the key things, the elements that should have in the article? So when you write any sort of press release, you focus on the who, what, when, where, why, and how. I mean, it's the same way when you write a news article. Right. Uh, I have a, my degree is in journalism, so that's, you know, like I said, I mentioned, I worked in television, I worked for MSNBC. I have this, tel this, this, this background in actually disseminating news, so that helps. But a lot of people don't who do public relations. Um, but you still focus on that. You know, first of all, you start off with before you do the press release. It really, what is the focus of this program or effort that you're trying to do? What is the ultimate goal um, for your effort in helping this organization? Are you creating awareness around something? Um, and you create messages around that. You have to create whatever that message is that relates to the activity. Build the message around the activity. If, if you're gathering money to make a donation, you have to create the story around it. As to why you're doing it. Why you're doing it. And then you speak to the organization and say, well, what is it that, what do you want the community to know about what you're doing or what your need is? And then you wrap your message around that. We are helping them because X, Y, Z. Mm. Start there. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you're trying to support an organization, they already have missions and goals. You just kind of connect what you, you know, your efforts to help them to their mission and goals, and let that be something that you do either annually or several times a year, or you look for organizations that match up with that similar mission, so that you look consistent in how you're helping. You know that that really has to match your core values. 
I mm-hmm. would say. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, you have to, you can't do something just for PR. Right. That's the whole purpose of this, this topic is to really pe- people to focus on making a difference first. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, you know, if, if, you're, if something is near and dear to your heart, um, maybe you have a connection to a certain type of community. I've, I've met plenty of small business uh, leaders who do a lot of things for battered women shelters mm-hmm. because some, somewhere in their lives, it doesn't have to be personal, this was something that, that, that impacted someone that they know or it's something that they really feel strong that needs help or awareness around. So they do things throughout the year with the women or the shelters or whatever. You know, you pick something, uh, a theme uh, that maybe that you could so you could build that story around. Yeah. You can create a story, a bit, but you don't want it to be con- too contrived, right? So you really want to look at so you know what makes sense for my business to help. Mm-hmm. Who do I? And by the way, the the story I told earlier, there was really no connection. It was just like, oh, let's do something. Let's give money to St. Yeah. Jude's. And just yeah, and like no thought. Whereas it would have been much more impactful if they said, okay, we have this men's. It was a men's shelter actually in the town. You know, and we I, we had visited there, and we knew they didn't think of them though for whatever reason. There was no getting them off of that St. Jude's thing. I don't know what it was about St. Jude's that year. <laughs> they're a worthy cause, by the way. They I don't want to say they're a worthy <laughs> cause. But if you don't have millions of dollars to give, mm-hmm. focus on the organizations that can give that you can give five hundred dollars, mm-hmm. whatever it is, time, yeah. and it would be way mm-hmm. more appreciated. So. Mm-hmm. So that's a very, very important thing to do is to focus in on those different things. Right. So bottom line, consider what you can get behind as a company. Yes. Um, and ultimately, you will reach the people that you need to reach. Um, and, and, but don't come at it from a self-serving purpose. Start from a place of how can we help? Authenticity. Yeah. You know, this is a great activity to do with your staff. You know, we are talking about people and people within your organization. You know, getting to know your staff and knowing, you know, so many stories happen to our own mm-hmm. team. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe by saying to your own team and saying, hey, I want to do something for our community. We really, whether we do a PR or not, I really want to give back because it is important as business owners and as organizations who benefit from the community to also give something back. That is crucial. So what kind of, um, how do you get your staff to, to be engaged in that idea of contributing, you know, towards thinking of who to give and getting them to tell you the why? Because that must be a little interesting. Yes. I mean, the easiest thing to do is, you know, if you have team meetings, which I hope you do, um, you mentioned... <laughs> Happy you, <laughs> you talk about, you know, you know what, we're thinking about putting together a program uh, where we give back and just solicit. I start with soliciting ideas. Does anybody, you know, knowing what, we're, what our focus is, you can even look at your, your plan, your three-year plan. You can look at whatever you have going on right now and say, knowing what we have in place, I want everybody to think of an organization or an effort that you feel that the company should get behind. And then you start, that starts a discussion. So now people are coming up with ideas. You have another meeting that's kind of decided and you kind of write them out on a, on a, on a whiteboard um, and you talk about them. And you let everybody kind of have their stump speech about what, you know, why they feel it's a good organization. Maybe more than one will come out of it. Maybe there's something you can do with more than one organization. But get them involved from the beginning. Don't come up with the idea and say, all right, come on, jump on board. No, that's a good point. You know, it's very important that it, employee engagement for the, not only, it's for the morale, it's for the teammates, the, the, the staff to connect in just more than work. I really believe that we spend much more time with our coworkers and our teams 